We started filming episodes of Test Drive on older, German luxury cars, but we know that the Japanese really helped to push the luxury envelope forward, especially into the 2000s. Our spotlight is on this 2004 Lexus LS430 Ultra Luxury. Very few of these cars were sold up here in Canada, making this pretty much the prime example for us to be able to feature here today. Now, the third generation had a facelift for 2004, so this is the updated version of it, which basically gave you new bumpers, changed up taillights and headlights, and some other pretty innovative tech, at least for Lexus. So we're gonna be showing you everything about this car, taking it on a drive, and going over everything you need to know if you're in the market for the Lexus LS430. Now, like I said, this is probably one of the best examples that we can get to feature on this show. This is one of only two LS430 Ultra Luxuries black on black sold in Canada. So somewhere out there, you can buy this exact car. This one is not for sale, but if you do have the other one, it's probably in Vancouver or something, then you will be in for a great treat. This is such a beautiful car, not only on the outside, the inside really is a treat to drive. Now I mentioned third generation, they changed things up a little bit. Front and rear faces were updated. But some of the tech also changed as well. The facelift version here was the first Lexus vehicle to include radar-based adaptive cruise control. It was introduced on the third generation before the facelift, but it used LiDAR. So if you were driving in, say, the rain, you'd have no active cruise control. It also used the first pre-collision system ever implemented into a Lexus to detect if there's something in front of you that you might hit. Now this also has an updated six speed automatic transmission and also LED taillights with bi-xenon adaptive headlights, which again, pretty cool stuff to have on a 2004 model. Has new rims, these ones are the summer rims. We're really lucky because this car was in winter mode before, but we've got the summer rims on here, essentially exactly how it came off the show floor when it was sold originally. And this is a two owner car, so you can't really ask for a better vehicle than this. Some of the other features on the outside, you have soft closing doors with a soft closed trunk. Great features to have on a full size luxury sedan. Parking sensors on the front and the back, rain sensing wipers, and also a height adjustable air suspension. Now those are usually swapped out by this point. They are not a super expensive to replace, but getting parts and everything will add up just like it would on your comparable Mercedes S-Class, BMW 7 Series, or Audi A8. But there is a lot going on with this car. I wanna jump inside, talk about the features there, talk about the features in the back seat as well, because it really is meant if you're an executive and you're being chauffeured around, and then we'll take it on a road test and go over everything you need to know with a quick buyer's guide about the third generation Lexus LS. Now I'm sure that there are people out there who think that the Germans make the best cars hands down, and you should never consider anything from Japan, but honestly, this car is really nice. It would compete with something like the E65 BMW 7 Series that we featured. We did feature the W220 Mercedes S-Class a couple times, and again, that would be in line with this. But, I mean, the Japanese just do things a little differently, and that's what I really like about it. So first off, you don't have to put the key in the ignition. It uses, you know, essentially a keyless entry and keyless start system, but when you put it into accessory, your steering wheel comes out, and your mirrors fold out, and I like that because most cars, the mirrors will fold out when you unlock the car, but you're usually folding them because you need a little bit of space to be able to get into the doors. So I like that, that it comes on all at the same time. But the interior here, at least according to Lexus, was inspired by the guest rooms from luxury hotels such as the Ritz Carlton. And the seats themselves are inspired by British Airways and Japan Airlines first class seating. It's so comfortable when you sit in here, whether you're a passenger or you're the driver. I mean, you really do sink into them. Very similar to what we find on an S class. You have heat and ventilation for the front seats here, heat, ventilation, and massage for the rear seats, which we'll talk about in a minute. So it's super comfortable. Visibility is good. You have tons of control over how high the seat is, forward, back, lumbar support, pretty much everything you could think of, these seats have it. So I do believe that they are telling the truth when they say that this really is inspired by top luxury amenities from hotels and airlines. Now the navigation system here is DVD based, but with the 276,000 kilometers on this car, it doesn't quite work anymore. It could just be a cleaning that needs to be done on the laser head, but the screen still works. You do have a Mark Levinson premium audio system. You can control it all through there. You can put the navigation on if you wanted to, but the screen still works, which is nice. You have all your controls for the screen system as well as the temperature. It's different. They're on the sides of your screen area. Very different. We usually see them 
pretty much all together. One of the real cool things about the automatic climate controls on this car is the vents here, they oscillate. You really don't see that. Aside from that, you do find all the other stuff that you would expect. Tons of storage in the center console area, power sunshade for the back, you have manual sunshades as well for the back windows, you have auto dimming mirror, you do have an Alcantara headliner. It looks nice and it's really soft. Again, feels like true luxury. And that's what I like about it. I mean, everything else is more or less leather, but the dashboard is a harder plastic material. That's the only letdown, if you want to say that, which really is not a letdown. It is really nice in here, super comfortable. And what I would expect to find from a Japanese car, it's not German, it's not over the top. It's elegant, reserved, a little conservative, but it really does get the job done. So let's jump in the back real quick because it's just as important back there and then we'll take it on the road. Oh, look at this leg room back here. Pretty damn similar to what you get on a long wheelbase 7 Series or S-Class. Like I said, you do have the manual sunshades back here, quarter windows as well. Little vanity lights that pop up so you can make sure you're pretty before your next business meeting. You have roof mounted vents for your HVAC as well as your lights. Vents along the center console area here plus control for pretty much everything that you'd want. You can move the seats out of the way, recline them back a little bit. Same with the headrests, they are power operated. Massage function, your own personal seat, and then audio controls for the front as well as the rear air conditioning and air purifier that comes on this car. So you have control over all of that, plus you can change the fan speed for automatic high, low, or air conditioning. You have a cup holder with the ventilated and heated seat controls there, plus the rear window sunshade as well really nice stuff again ultra comfortable back here if i were to put my own seat back ah i can relax a little bit ah i could almost fall asleep and i'm telling you like it is just as comfortable as it is sitting in the front and that's the whole point of these cars maybe not today when it comes to buying a car you know the people who are buying this 14 15 years ago they were probably looking to be able to sit in the back but today yeah, you're maybe buying it because you really just like these cars you're driving them on your own or you've got a family, you have kids. And I'm telling you, my daughter would absolutely love to play with all of this stuff. So I think it's really nice that you can get a car like this for not a whole lot. I mean, these new were very affordable compared to the S-Class or 7 Series. But even today, I mean, if you want an absolutely bulletproof daily driver, there really is nothing better than a Lexus. Now, the last thing I'll show you just as I'm getting out of the car, you'll notice that the light is not on here. The door that you open will have the light on. So as I open my door, They've swapped over to LED lights on here, but this side comes on independent from the other side. And then if I close it, it'll turn off. So again, small, tiny little details about this car that just raise the bar a little bit. Again, each manufacturer does something very different, but I think that Lexus really had a competing vehicle here with the German Giants. And honestly, it's a nice car. So let's take it on a drive now. We'll put this car to its test and then go over everything else you need to know about it. Now we're going to start off real quick. I want to show you something that's really important. You'll see the rear visor, whatever you want to call it, the rear sunshade. It goes up automatically after it goes down automatically. It'll go down when you put the car into reverse. The important thing is it comes back up afterwards. We've talked about that actually with modern luxury cars that don't quite do it. But I really do want to talk about this LS430. Obviously it is a vehicle that you guys, the viewers, have been asking for. But it's also a car that I've wanted to do. These luxury cars are so fantastic, not only to drive, but just the ownership experience, especially today, is really second to none. And this really does have a lot of the same luxury that you can get on a modern car today, especially something like the adaptive cruise control is a nice plus. Not sure you don't have blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist or anything like that, but I think most people will agree that they're not things that you absolutely want to have if you're an enthusiast. They're nice to have, but you really don't absolutely need them. But this car is so close to the Mercedes S-Classes that we've driven, all of them. We've driven three different generations of S-Class, four different cars, and they're always butter smooth on the road, and so is this. I mean, not only is the ride phenomenal, but just the graceful power delivery of this 290 horsepower V8 engine really is unmatched. It's not the fastest. Lexus, at the time at least, wasn't too worried about overall performance it was about the ride and comfort and i'm telling you, you really can't get much better than this especially for a car that's 15 years old now we're pulling up here against an es300 that's also one of our favorite vehicles that we've featured 
over the last little while. One of the most reliable luxury cars you can buy, especially in today's money. Great option for people. And that's why these cars are still so sought after because really, I mean, you can't beat it. I'm driving along here, we're in just the regular mode. If I put it into power mode, the sport suspension here doesn't work. The adaptive suspension was replaced with a regular setup here, a little bit more cost effective. But if I were to floor it, kicks down a little bit. Oh, like the smoothness of the gear changes. Phenomenal, especially with a six speed transmission. I mean, you don't normally get that with a six speed, especially today's tech. It's so nice, everything's smooth, but wow, for a 15 year old car, it's amazing. I mean, you're not going to be driving this necessarily full power all the time, but it is there if you want it. I don't want it, at least not on this drive. I'm just so happy driving it in comfort mode. So we're going to flip it back. Can't hear a difference. The engine is so quiet. The exhaust is blissful. I really like driving this car. I mean, I had a chance to spend some time with it a couple months ago. Last time we came out to the Toronto area, I was a passenger in it just sitting in the front and as even as a passenger it's so nice to be in it it's quiet on the road it's comfortable seats are fantastic especially on a day like today it's actually kind of nice you can put on the ventilated front seats and if you were sitting in the back the massaging seat there's like a vibrator kind of thing it's like you go to the cheap motels you put a quarter in the vibrating bed and it does that but i mean still really great tech for a vehicle that really competed well not only in terms of luxury i mean yeah, unless you really love Mercedes, really love BMW, I think that most people would agree that this really is on par with, especially the 7 Series. But I mean, this car is just so reliable. That's the reason why you buy 276,000 kilometers. The exterior is in great shape. The interior, I can count on one hand the little teeny tiny things that you can fix on it if you wanted to. They really don't take away from the car. It's mainly just tech stuff here, right? But for a car that is almost at 300,000 kilometers it's in really great condition and just goes to show you how reliable these cars are because I've talked to the owner obviously he's a good friend of mine and he's had it for a few months now I think it's about six to eight months and he has had literally no issues with it he's done some preventative maintenance things that you should be doing around the 300,000 kilometer mark he's done a little early we'll talk about that as we wrap up in our buyer's guide segment but I mean, it's not left him stranded anywhere. He drives this as a daily driver. He's put a ton of kilometers on it since he's bought it. And obviously the first owner did as well because it's at 276, it's high up. And you really wouldn't tell. I mean, it drives so well in mean, the handling. We talked about that a little bit when we did the his actually LS400 before. You know, you feel a little boat-like with the steering and it's true. You go around the corner like this, it's not as tight as what you get on a BMW. But again, the drive is different this is positioned as a different vehicle because it isn't meant to be sporty it is meant to be comfortable and easy to drive and, and power steering certainly helps with a heavy car like this i have no issues going around the corners it's just a different experience and i think that's why we keep recommending lexus especially this generation anything from like well <laughs> anything from lexus essentially but this sort of era early 2000s stuff is just best bang for your buck at this point. They're usually incredibly well maintained coming from first owners. And I'm telling you, man, like compared to any other car that we've driven at the 2000 to 2006 mark, I mean, this drives the best, hands down, especially with the mileage. Take it from a little dig here. Keep in mind, it's rear wheel drive only. Oh, no wheel spin whatsoever, but oh yeah. I mean, if we weren't in an area I'm not supposed to be going that quick, it would have been you know, up to 100 in no time whatsoever. And that's the thing, effortless. If you want to think about, other than the words reliability, dependability, and maintenance-free when it comes to Lexus, I would say that consistency and pretty much effortless driving is what comes to mind with this car. I Just experience it. I, there's very little I can say because, I mean, it's so great, but it really comes down to the drive that you get to experience so if you're looking for this type of car if you're looking for a really reliable full-size luxury daily driver find one of these especially ultra luxury you get everything like this is really up there in terms of luxury and i don't even mind the fact that this isn't like a full leather dashboard it's sort of the same thing that the japanese were using with a lot of the cars acura vigor that we featured it's this weird plastic material here it's not it's not ugly 
It's just not leather, but I like it. And then the rest of the wood flows throughout the entire center of the vehicle here and just looks great. Anytime we've done one of the full-size luxury cars, whether it's a new one or an old one, I always try to get into the back seat just to talk about how it is for a back seat passenger. For the most part today, 2019, most people aren't going to be using the back seat space and hiring a chauffeur, but it's still fun to talk about because again, if you have kids or family and stuff, they want to go in the back, you want to know about it. So back here again, we have full control of everything. If I want to put my seat back, it's a little squeaky just because I am a little bit larger than most. Put my headrest up. I I'm super comfortable back here, like I mentioned, putting on the massage. Again, like we said on the drive around, it is more like a really cheap coin operated motel bed, but whatever. But you'll also have control for the HVAC system as well as the audio. So I can turn up the volume from here for the radio, which is good. I can change the radio too, change the mode and everything. And then I can also change the temperature and fan controls back here. So I have a little bit better control for the fan speed and have more airflow or less hotter or colder depending on what I want. And you can move the lights for the LEDs back here, turn them on or off independently. You've got your vents, your little vanity mirrors, just make sure I look okay. But I mean, it is comfortable back here. The ride is good too. I mean, you really feel nothing even as a backseat passenger in this vehicle. It's so smooth. And I mean, I know I keep saying that, but it really is the takeaway from this car. If you want something that is truly a next level above, especially if you're looking at it in the used market today, we love our BMWs, we love our, our Mercedes, but they aren't as reliable. Something like this, it's gonna be unmatched. I am really comfortable back here. Space is great. Put a car seat if you need it. It does have the Isoflex anchor points in the bottom of the seats, so you can fit a full car seat back here. But it's just quiet. Almost like I don't need to tell my driver where to go as we go around the block here. Because why would I? I mean, I almost feel like she wouldn't hear me with all of this soundproofing on the inside here. This really nice Alcantara, but I could see myself 15 years ago, nice executive for a company, get my Lexus company car, have a chauffeur driving around and pretty much have nothing to worry about. That's the life. When it comes to the third generation Lexus LS, there's some important details to know. Production ran from the 2001 to 2006 model years, with 2004 being the facelift. As mentioned near the start, this black-on-black -black LS430 Ultra Luxury is one of only two sold in Canada in 2004 with this exact build, and only 17 Ultra Luxuries made it to dealerships in Canada for the entire year. Less were sold in 2005, and even fewer in 2006. So finding one will be very difficult if you're up here in Canada, but likely a little easier if you live in the US. The Ultra Luxury was the top end trim, and this one came with the pre-collision system as well. Below you'll have the Custom Luxury, which had most of the good stuff minus the smart key system and rear amenities, but there were individual options such as the Smart Access System or XM Satellite Radio. I also mentioned during our road test that these early 2000s Lexus models are some of the most reliable, but you'll still have some small problems to address over the course of ownership. The 276,000 kilometer example we have was incredibly well maintained and only had a few small problems, such as the backup camera, navigation computer, the coin tray beside the steering wheel, and parking sensors. All easy enough fixes if you're willing to get your hands a little dirty. Other issues that might come up include power mirror motor failing, including the folding mechanism, power steering wheel, and the Mark Levinson subwoofer. A number of four members on clublexus.com also experienced premature front wheel bearing wear out, along with a lot of members opting to swap over the factory air suspension with a less complicated setup. Aside from small wear and tear issues that any car experiences, the Lexus LS430 is once again a top pick for overall reliability if you're looking for a solid, dependable daily driver. Finding a vehicle in good shape is key to happy ownership experience, but service history and maintenance records are also vital. A lot of these LS430s are one owner cars with immaculate history, but on the other end of the spectrum there are enough of them out there that have been abused or neglected just like any other full size luxury car. As long as you're doing your due diligence, you'll be joining the ranks of ownership of one of the most reliable classic cars you can buy today, not to mention one with most of the luxury and tech found on new cars. Thank you.